Hey guys, those are Vacations, and I thought I'd uh, make a quick little video about, based about the tragedy that just recently occurred, and I know everyone else, you know, all my other friends have made videos about it, and uh, I decided, you know, I'd give my thoughts real quick on it. Um, first off the bat, i just like to, uh, my heart and prayers go out to the families of those who were killed and injured, you know, by... Uh, by this just I mean I'm really having a hard time even talking about this just the met this kind of this did you know this shooting this shooting that happened at the midnight screening of the Dark Knight Rises last night it it just it like puts your life puts things in perspective it really makes you realize that man life you know there there it makes you realize that there are other parts of man that are not so pretty you know, basically, it basically puts to light the darker side of humanity. Um, we as humans are capable of beautiful, wonderful things, but we're also capable of murder, destruction, and war. Um, kind of, you know, you, I could definitely, I definitely agree with Matt on, you know, if there is a God or whoever, if there is a, a, a higher power, he's probably looking down on us and just being like, should know better you should know better so I mean I'm just speechless that's really the whole reaction when I, I woke up this morning just went to I just went in to look at some news and then I saw this this Dark Knight Rises shooting stuff first I saw it like I, I saw it mentioned and uh, I was looking at uh, sports website and someone's leaving comments and someone said something in Colorado I'm like what what in Colorado and then I saw I went online and looked at cinema blind I'm like oh my god this is just this is terrible like 12 I mean I think there's 12 or maybe more people who were murdered were killed and during this shooting um, there were also a bunch of other people who were injured um, the details so far are of this kid this young man um, I believe, I believe his name is, uh, um, James Holmes. Yeah. He killed 12 people and injured 28. So that's a total of pretty much over, I think, close to 50 people that he either maimed or killed. James Holmes... I guess at the midnight screening of uh, Dark Knight Rises in Aurora, Colorado, he broke in through a back door, I think a back exit door, uh, armed to the teeth with gas with a gas mask and riot gear, and basically went in and just mowed down a bunch of people. He threw tear gas in first, and then he mowed down a bunch of people senseless, senselessly completely without any morals or without any, you know, uh, respect for human life. These kind of people are the scum of the earth. These are the kind of people that should not, really should not be on this earth anymore. These kind of people, you know, I advocate for the death penalty. All right, These kind of people don't deserve to live. I mean, if they're going to go kill 12 people senselessly, and injure a bunch more and not you know and it just it just blows my mind that somebody would even think about doing this you know that some person out there because he thought about it so some person out there is crazy enough to do this kind of thing but that's the thing there are some people out there that are really honestly mentally insane that are off the rocker and should not be around in society. Um, but, but you know, I also think that this event hopefully will, you know, kind of push the government to start uh, working some more on mental health because that's a huge issue. I mean, I'm not saying if this guy got help when he was a kid, they might have been able to prevent this, but I'm saying it might have helped. Because there are so many people out there that if they got some sort of help before they ended up 
finally doing this crazy act that they might have been able to be rehabilitated and would, would have been able to become functional members of society instead of sociopathic, psychotic killers. Now, I'm not saying, it, you know, it's a controversial subject. This whole subject is controversial. But, I mean, the whole thing, what I'm saying is a mental health thing, is this guy was obviously not sane. Um, and if he was, but I, I, I don't agree that he should get the insane insanity plea because, yes, he's crazy. But he's he's the he's the kind of crazy that still has all his wherewithal, that he still knows what he's doing. He it's not that he doesn't know what's right or wrong. He planned this whole thing. He planned the whole thing. He probably had this plan thing planned months in advance. I don't know what it was. Was it he couldn't get a ticket to the midnight screening? Was it because he wanted to see, you know, if he could be a real villain? And see if you know anybody could would be heroic enough to actually stand up to him. I, I have no idea what what is going on in his twisted mind. I don't think anybody does. Only only James Holmes knows what what why he decided to do this. So um, I, it's just I'm I'm just really trying to I'm just I'm trying to wrap my brain around this 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 this. this this senseless violence it's just like oh my god and 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 it's just i don't know if it's coincidence or not but this happens like with only like a few days later after you know there's a bunch of death threats for bat for you know of critics you know death threats towards critics who don't like the dark knight rises and then this crazy guy goes in and kills a bunch of people a dark knight rises showing that's just it's just it just sucks. That's what it does. It sucks. It's a shitty fucking deal. It's a raw deal for these people who died and got injured by this asshat. So, I... I, I mean, right after, you know, definitely all the people who are saying, oh, the Dark Knight Rises, you know, it's responsible for this. No, it's not. Hey, I'd be the first to... You know, try to use that for leverage because I don't care for no one's films. But I'm not going to stoop that low, okay? This senseless shooting is not because is not was not directly caused by the Dark Knight Rises. In my opinion, you know, James Holmes might have been influenced by no one's films and got some ideas from it. But a lot of people get ideas to do crazy things, and a lot of people don't actually do it. Let me think about it. You've had a bad day at work. You're pissed off at your boss. You're thinking about strangling his ass or punching him in the face. You don't do any of those because you want to keep your job. This guy, on the other hand, thought of the idea, I'm going to go in and try to be like a joker, cause chaos, and watch the world burn, and I'm going to do it during the screening of The Dark Knight Rises when there's a bunch of people. Um, I'm going to do it. I have the wherewithal to do it. I have this plan. I can do it. Movie theaters don't have any security. Uh, you know, he knew that he would. This he probably, like I said, he had the thought process in his head. But unlike other people who would just say, "No, I'm not doing it," because that's crazy, he thought it was the sane thing to do. So, I, I would not use insanity plea on this guy because he had the wherewithal. He, he bought guns, he bought body armor, he bought riot gear, he bought a gas mask, he bought tear gas. He probably set up strategic points with this whole thing. He specifically started this, this riot slash murder spree during an action sequence when there was a lot of gunplay. So, you know, Dark Knight Rises is not directly responsible for this man's actions, but I gotta admit, in my opinion... It might, you know, his his actions could have been influenced by the film, but it's not. The, but they're not the cause of it. That's the whole thing. Might have been influenced. He got the idea in his head from watching these movies, but the the thing that influenced him to do this is his own brain, is his own wherewithal, is his own mind. That's what influenced him to do these horrific actions, not the movie. So I mean, it's just like you know the Columbine shootings. Where everyone was saying, blaming news, news, you know, the news places, 
the news uh, reporters and places like that. They were they were and uh, I don't know why I just can't come up with the right word for reporter or whatever or news shows. So anyway, the news shows and reporters they were claiming that reporting that Marilyn Manson music caused them to kill these you know people at Columbine or that the fact that they played Doom. I'm sorry, that's BS and that's bullshit. Violent video games and violent movies are not the reason why people do these violent acts. Um, the reason why is because, fuck, you know, the guys at Columbine and this James Holmes guy, he could have been eating Easy Mac before he decided to do this freaking thing, to do this, you know, do his deadly deed. And are you going to blame Easy Mac for, for the death of, you know, these these people? I don't think so. It's Easy Mac's fault. No, it's not Easy Mac's fault. Just like it's not the Dark Knight Rises' fault. And it's not Violent Movies' fault. That's that's really that that's that's going to extremes there. If you're using that for your argument, yes, I know he said in our interviews at the police he dyed his hair orange, called himself the Joker. All right, but did you ever think that there you know there are different types of fans of movies, and there's not you know that. It's not a it's not a wild crazy idea to think that some fans of these movies might be a bit fucked in the head. You know, to excuse my French, might be a little bit, you know, might be on the train to crazy town. And sadly, this is one of those fans who was a fan of these movies, but then at the same time he lost all I he just lost it. And in my opinion, I think his his moment of terror, it sort of reminds me of the sort of thing that a lot of, you know, there have been people, documented cases, where people just, just, right, just went not, just lost it. They've just, you know, they're normal, functional members of society, and then they do one crazy killing spree, and then go back to their normal life like nothing ever happened. That kind of, that, that idea is not only scary, but it happens. And there's a documentary on uh, I forgot what it, what it was, but there's documentaries talking about evil, and you know, and man, and man, and how about three percent of our population is inherently you know psychotic or evil or or needs some, you need some serious help. Um, the other percent, you know, they have their issues. But the, the, another thing that I feel also is that each one of us has the capacity to kill another human being. But there, there, but there are, there are people that have a more have more capacity to do these horrible acts. You know, every each one of us has has the ability to kill somebody. Whether or not you're going to use that ability is up to you, and uh, that that's that's you know it's kind of a gray area, you know, and uh, I don't condone killing anybody. I don't. There's really never a reason for it unless it's for self-defense, unless you got a robber in your house, he's got a gun on you and your family, you somehow have, you you have a gun and you shoot it. That okay, all right. If you're in a war, if you're a soldier and you got to defend yourself and gunfire and you got to shoot somebody, okay. Okay, self-defense and, and de defending yourself. All right. Senselessly murdering people? No. There's no no excuse for that. Not so, I, I really don't know what to say about the whole issue, except I really hope that this opens the eyes and ears and minds of these some of these crazy Nolan fanboys. I'm not saying that all of the Nolan Batman fans are like this crazy guy, James Holmes, but, you know, some of them really honestly went too far with the death threats and stuff like that. I hope they're feeling really bad about you know, about this. I'm not saying they're responsible for it, but I'm just saying I hope that the people who sent these death threats to these critics who didn't like Dark Knight Rises, you know, really look at themselves now and be like, you know, man, I really overreacted, and 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 in light of these recent events, I look like, you know, I look like a fool. It was totally uncalled for on my part. So the whole thing, you know, hopefully this horrible event can hopefully bring people together, bring Batman fans together. If, you know, 
hopefully it'll hammer, you know, the notion that, you know, that everybody has a different opinion and it's, and that's okay into these people's heads. You know, I hope I don't see any more of this crazy hate, you know, it, you know, all these hate comments from these crazy fans because especially in light of this, these events, it's not a good idea to act like an asshole you know about this movie after this this twisted man just killed a bunch of people so you know during a screening of the same movie that you're being an asshole about so i would lay off it you know if i were if i were in the in the place of some of these nolan fanboys i would lay off the hate and i would lay off the bs i would lay off it so hopefully they'll, they'll uh they'll get the point there but I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's, it like I said, it, it's speechless. It leaves you speechless. You're like, oh my god! It's one of those moments where you, you, you usually, you know, you're going about your day, and then bam, you know, this news. You're like, holy shit! You know, it makes you realize that the world can be a very scary place sometimes. It can be a place that you don't want to be a part of, and uh, <laughs> I really don't know what else to say about the whole thing. It's just. It's just sad. It really is. It's just sad. It's sad that this had to happen. And, uh... I... I mean, I really don't know what else to say. Except, you know, my hearts and my prayers go out to the victims and the family... The, the You know, the families of the victims of this of this tragedy. And, uh... I, I, would, I would hope that it wouldn't affect the box office totals too much. But, you know, who gives a shit about the box office totals? People just died. So that that's my opinion on that. Twelve people just died. You know, during a screening of this movie. Who gives a fuck about the box office totals for this film? So, all the whining and all the bitching about which movie is better, Avengers of the Dark Knight Rises needs to stop. Because, in all honesty, people just died. So take a chill pill, relax, you know, and just enjoy life, okay? Enjoy life. Don't don't think that your life has to be part of a fantasy world created by Christopher Nolan, okay? Enjoy your life. Go hang out with friends. Go have some, you know, go ride a bike. Go take a walk in the fresh air. I'm I'm just saying that this this whole thing it's like it, it really these crazy fans and perspective. If you're one of those crazy fans, I would hope you would be thinking twice about your behavior and your actions from now on. Not because you could end up doing the kind of horrific things that this that this guy did. It's just that it's just not in your best interest to act like that after this guy just murdered people. It's just really not the be in your best interest to do that. But I'm pretty sure there will still be pe pe there will still be asshats who will do it, and still be completely pompous, arrogant assholes whenever you honestly don't like whenever you don't like, you know, their movie or adhere to their opinion. And what I gotta say, to those people is grow the fuck up. It's a goddamn movie, all right? It's a movie, damn it. <laughs> it's a goddamn movie. It's not a religion, okay? It's not a religion. It isn't. And even in the even for the sake of a religion, people shouldn't be going as far as they do with religion too. Like these assholes who are protesting Sage Stallone's funeral and being a bunch of freaking pricks. I mean, that's not acceptable. I mean, the people who protest, you know, the the so-called Christians or religious people who are just about as hateful as a KKK because they think gays are evil or whatever, or this or that or whatever, you know, God isn't going to approve of that behavior. If you're believing in God and Christianity and all these religious stuff, I would think you would look in your Bible and realize that, you know, you're not supposed to cast stones. So... That kind of thing is ridiculous. And just like this whole hatred thing about, you know, if you don't like a certain movie, someone will just attack you out of nowhere and insult your mother. It's ridiculous. 
insipid, and immature. And especially in light of these events, I would hope that it would stop. At least for a day. Hopefully, when it comes to this movie, it'll stop forever. Because as much as I don't want to admit it, as much as I would hope it wouldn't be the case, The Dark Knight Rises is, for, is now forever tainted. It is going to be a forever tainted film because it's going to be... Every time you mention The Dark Knight Rises, this tragedy is going to be attached to it. And the same, you know, there's a tragedy attached to The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger dying, but that's a different case. There's still somebody dying, and that was horrible. But that was his decision. Uh, if it was an accidental overdose or not, I don't really know for sure. But he did take a bunch of pills. He took a handful of sleeping pills. So, take, take you know, do with that what you will. But, in this case, people got murdered. Senselessly slaughtered by some guy who probably, he thought he was, you know, the new villain. You know, or the new Bane or something. He was going to be the Bane of society. And that's the whole thing. This, this event really reveals the Bane of society. This dark, twisted fucked up part of our life that we really like to just hide under the rug or something because everybody you know it's it, it's like a dark fucked up part of humankind not really our lives but a dark fucked up kind of you know part of humankind that we like to shove under the rug and say it doesn't you know there aren't these really psychotic crazy guys who would just decapitate people on a bus and then they have to be taken to a mental hospital and fed a bunch of pills just to become somewhat lucid and then when they are able to actually coherently say anything the first words they say is kill me people like that exist whether you want to believe that or not people like that exist and it's not because they're possessed by demons or some shit there's something wrong with the wiring in their brains you know that's bad wiring so definitely this 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 man had some bad wiring. And 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 also to his parents. I I can't believe I heard that his mother was like, "Well, I'm not surprised." What? Not surprised? That's your response. You're like, "I don't condone his actions, but you know, I'm not surprised that he did this." What? Why did you do something about it? If you knew your son was doing these type of actions, if he was planning this whole thing, if he was doing all this shit, I guess he wasn't living with you anymore, alright? So as soon as your son moves out of your house, you just refuse to give a shit about him anymore? You don't check up on him anymore? You just let him do his own thing? You know? Just let him build his own freaking bunker or whatever full of explosives and whatever police try to come in and, you know, look around? He doesn't leave that. Just about, oh, whatever. I'll, I won't check up on my son. I mean, there's a possibility that she did, and he, like, hid shit, and she didn't know about it. But for the fact that, for her to admit that, oh, I'm not surprised, it's like, oh, come on now. And I, I agree with what Matt was saying. There are some people who should not have kids. You know, there are some stupid people out there that should not be having kids. Because it's a big responsibility. Having kids is a huge responsibility. It's like a job. But you're not getting paid for it, usually. It's a job. And you better do it correctly. Because you have so because you're dealing with a life. Because when you raise your kid, that kid's gonna grow up with whatever you whatever whatever you have used or whatever words you've used or whatever discipline or whatever things that you taught your kid, that kid is gonna grow up with those ideals or those thoughts. He's gonna grow up with those things. So being being a father or being a mother or being a parent, it's it's a tough job. It really is. You know, I I I, I kind of understand what it's like because I took care of to my uncle and my stepbrother for like a, almost almost a year, like a half a year on a minimum wage paycheck. I let them push me around a little bit until finally I put my foot down and said, "No, we're not getting Carl's Jr. tonight. We don't have any damn money, and you're eating top ramen." And that's it. I mean, that's with if you're going to be a parent, the one thing that I have to definitely suggest that you do, if anybody here wants to be a parent, or if they end up being a parent and you know weren't expecting it, consistency. 
Because I have a cousin of mine who his mother is the most inconsistent. I don't even want to use that certain word to describe her, but I do. She's the most inconsistent parent I've ever seen. She she basically she says she's gonna do one thing and then is it doing another. That's the whole thing. If you're gonna raise a kid, you better be consistent. You better be consistent with your punishments. You better be consistent with your promises. If you say that you know you're gonna pay your kid for whatever some work that he's doing, you better pay your kid. Because if you don't do that, your kid's gonna grow up with this attitude that he's just me against the world. Fuck everybody. It's all about me, and you know, fuck everybody else because nobody gave a shit about me when I was growing up either. So, if you want your kid to, if you know, if you want kid to grow up with a good head on your shoulders, I would suggest being consistent. Now, I'm not saying that his parents weren't consistent, James Holmes's parents, but if she's saying that I'm not surprised he do that, I don't, I don't really call that consistency. But, I mean, that's just, you have so many cases like that, and it's tragic. It's not only tragic about, you know, all these killings that this asshole, you know, all these people that he, that he has murdered senselessly, 12 people, dozen people just taken, you know, taking their lives taken away from them by this psychotic asshole, but... You know, part of you would try. You know, part part of us as hum as humans, we we tend and we want to care for one another. We wanna, we wanna, you know, have feelings. You know, to you know for each other. But in this guy's case, I am having a hard time even being. Who can be sympathetic with this guy? I mean, how how can anybody be sympathetic with this guy? I can't be sympathetic with this guy. I may be sympathetic with his parents because they could have done something to possibly been able to push this kid in a different direction, but you never know. It, it you know the kid probably it was his choice to do all this shit. I mean, there are cases of kids who have gotten help early in their lives, psychiatric help, and gotten, and then they still ended up doing crazy shit. So it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't type scenario. So. Because there's no sure thing. There's no sure thing. Uh, there's no sure way of making everybody get along be in, in this world. You know, they're, they're, the world's never going to get together and buy itself a Coke. It's not going to happen. You know, there's no going to be world peace. The reason why there's going to be world peace is because it's not inherently in human nature. Human nature, it's part of human nature to be violent, to fight, to do whatever, you know, you know, it's part of human nature. As much as I want to not say it's a part of human nature, it is. It's been a part of human nature ever since, you know, man started. Ever since, you know, Cain and Abel in the Bible, you know. Probably Neanderthal times, too. I mean, it's just part of who we are. But we can also learn to just repress those type of behaviors. Certain things can be used to teach these kids or teach these people to repress these type of behaviors before it's too late. I'm not being sympathetic with this man and his actions. What I'm being more sympathetic for is basically might be what his mental illness is. That's all. I'm more sympathetic for mental illness. I mean, because I'm not saying I'm the craziest. I mean, I don't have the crazy. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I mean, I have a form of autism with Asperger's syndrome. You know, it is a mental sort of thing. I wouldn't go to call it mental health, but it did affect the way I, I th it still affects the way I think to this day. I, my wiring is all backwards. It doesn't. All, it, it's not the same as as you know, you know other people's are. You know other people's brains are other other people's brains are wired a lot differently than mine. Mine is wired differently than other people's brains. It's part of what I have. But you know, I'm just. I like to talk about mental health because it's something that I really feel strongly about because it helped me out a lot. I my my mom was was willing enough to spend money and. Get me into a school system which had support for me, and then actually get me to you know talk and have meetings with a psychiatrist, and 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 it helped me immensely. I would not be where I am today without the help that I got from my psychiatrist or my counselors at school. It, it I just wouldn't be nearly. I I could barely even talk when I was a kid. I couldn't even write. I, my hands were all screwed up. I couldn't even move my hands. I had to do physical therapy to even get them to work correctly. I mean, when I think about how far I've come with the help that I've gotten, 
I want other people to be able to be able to get that help. So it's not I'm not saying that I'm sympathetic towards this guy. No, I'm sympathetic towards whatever mental illness he might have had or might have. So because these people can be helped. Hopefully, you know, like I said, hopefully this event will open the government's eyes and make them realize we need to have more mental health institutions, more places to help these people instead of just throwing them in jail because, they, you know, and that's not going to do anything. Because a lot of these people who have genuine mental health issues don't know they're doing anything wrong. They, 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 they don't know what they're doing. They, they, they don't know any better. But in this guy's case, he knows better. He planned it. He, know, he, he had this whole grand plan. The guy knew better, just like the people in Columbine knew better. I don't buy the insanity plea. But what I do buy is that he might have some issues. He might, some, he might have had some issues socially. He might have had some issues mentally. I'm not saying he's mentally insane, but he might have had some bad wiring. So what I'm trying to say is hopefully with this incident, we can get more people, more professionals at their field of mental health to help rewire these people with these brains that are just not wired right. They're not wired correctly enough to function in today's society. And hopefully we can have, hopefully this will open the door for more, you know, places like, you know, civil services or whatever, or places where you can have these people for so for there's a place for these people to go instead of jail. So then maybe we can rehabilitate these people before they do something crazy again. And there's always going to be crazy people. It's not like we're going to be able to fix, you know, whatever makes somebody crazy. But at least we can try to help these people because they are human beings. This guy though, he's scum because he just killed a bunch of people and, you know, he deserves a chair. But, you know, there are people that can be helped that are not getting helped right now that's what i'm saying and i seriously doubt the government will do anything because they didn't do anything in columbine they didn't do anything with all these other school shootings these people i'm not saying that these events could have been avoided if these kids had gotten helped but it definitely might have helped if they had counselors or psychiat psychiatrists or the parents actually figured out what these kids were doing ahead of time and decided to send them to a psychiatrist or you know get these kids some help I mean I it that might have helped I'm not saying it would have prevented these actions but at least it might have helped but I don't know if any of them you know any of them did get help I don't know like I said it could have happened it could have happened anyway even with the help so I know I'm rambling but all I gotta say is you know this is just such a senseless act of violence which is just uncalled for. And it's just, you know, and it just, I know it's a part of human nature to, to be violent or to, or fight or war. But, you know, part of me wishes that that part of our nature didn't exist. Because it doesn't lead to anything good. It doesn't lead to anything worthwhile. It, I mean, I'm not saying that we wouldn't have, you know, for us not to have the ability to protect ourselves. I'm fine with that. But, I really do wish the side of our psyche, the side of our, our human nature, which makes us kill people senselessly, never existed. But sadly, there's no cure to that. Just like there's no surefire cure for people with mental health and illnesses. But at least we can try to help them. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, and definitely, once again, I'm going to hammer the point home here. It's not the movie's fault. Dark Knight Rises didn't make these people, didn't make this guy shoot everybody. It was his own decision. It was his own decision. He decided to do this. It was not the movie that made him do it. It might have influenced an idea in his head. But he's the one that decided to put that idea to fruition. He decided to turn that idea, that fantasy, into reality. And in my opinion, he should be condemned for that. He should be basically... He should, he should be thrown in jail for the rest of his life. Or... Or given the death penalty. There's no excuse for that. There's none. There is no reason to senselessly kill a bunch of people. I don't know what his agenda was. I don't even really care. All I know is that I'm glad that this guy got caught and he's be behind bars where he belongs. And uh, I'm just going to end it with, you know, folks, 
just if you want if you still want to go see the Dark Knight Rises, go right ahead. Me on the other hand, I'm on the fence. I've been on the fence for a while. I think I'll wait. So you know, do with that what you will. But once again, don't blame Dark Knight Rises for this act of violence. It's not the movie's fault. And uh, you know, and if you have the time and if you I don't know, my brain's kind of having a hard time right now, but what trying to get at is appreciate life. Appreciate what you've got, what you have, because you never know. You never know. Some asshole might shoot you while you're watching a movie in the movie theater. So what I like to do and what I do every day in my life is I live day by day, each and every day. And I kind of like to live my life as if every day was my last because I try to make it as happy and as good as and as great as I possibly can make it. I try not to think about the negatives. I try to think about the positives. And, you know, that's kind of how I roll through life. Everybody does it differently. But, you know, just, 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 I hope this event has made you take take a step back and, you know, realize, you know, wow, kind of hopefully made you look around you, look around, you know, you know, look around you and your family and think about all the memories and good things that you have in your life and appreciate them because you never know. You could have all of that taken from you in a flash. So just, yeah, just, just hopefully people will learn from this. Hopefully, you know, the fanboys will take a chill pill because of this. Hopefully, you know, Hopefully this guy gets what's coming to him. I guarantee he is going to get what's coming to him. But, you know, I, I really don't know what else to say, except uh, it's just a horrible, 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 just, just an awful, I, I mean, it's just an awful scenario. It, it's just an absolutely, you, I mean, there are other scenarios that are, bad and, and people dying and things like that but that's the whole thing I mean dying just dying itself death is not good it's never good and you know when people die you know and especially innocent people die that really hits home whether or not you knew these people or not it definitely does make you feel you know it feels hopefully it makes you feel some emotions at least I don't know I'm rambling. I know I'm rambling, but I want to leave it with this. Just a little, you know, warning. If anybody is making jokes about this, seriously, I don't know what kind of piece... You're, you're a piece of shit if you're making jokes about this type of thing. Don't make jokes about this. This is not funny, and this is no laughing matter. So, I'll leave it on that. It's not a laughing matter. So, these people died. There are people who got hurt injured by this psychopath and uh, I would hope I, I wish that this type of behavior would stop and never happen again but it's gonna it's gonna happen again like I said it's part of human nature and uh, and it's a part of human nature that I would rather forget